Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. What is your sales process and how do you actually convert your leads into paying customers? Now, you'll be surprised. A lot of coaches, consultants and small business owners that come to us, they just think when you put marketing out there, people are going to beat a pathway to their door and they are not going to be sold onto um, you know, uh, buying the products or services that they are actually selling. Well, that wouldn't be further from the truth. It actually just starts with a simple premise that um, people only do things for one or two reasons, okay? People do either what they want to or what they have to. And um, an alternative to this is people are always seeking out pleasure or they are seeking to avoid pain. Now, how are you going to know uh, whether you're helping people have what they want or uh, do what they have to or help them seek out pleasure or avoid pain if you're not fully engaged with a process that helps you convert these people into customers that pay, stay, and refer. And one thing that you also discover when in this podcast is that people like buying stuff, but they don't like to be sold to. So if you don't have a process or a way of converting uh, these leads into uh, proper business, then you are on a treadmill of feast and famine and... Um, you will never have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I think it was W. Edwards Deming that said that if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, then you don't know what you're doing. So at the end of the day, um, you know, in, in, in this chaotic world of trying to market and close business and maybe trying to have a business that's profitable, and enjoyable, we might be uh, doing all the cold calls, sending out all the emails, and nobody's actually responding to any of the marketing that we're throwing out there. And it's not their fault. It's only because people do not um, respond to marketing that's not, um, you know, speaking to them. So I do understand as a coach or consultant, growing your business is really tough. You're probably cold calling potential clients and having them hang up in your face. You're sending out hundreds of emails without getting as much as a thank you for reaching out and you're wasting thousands of dollars on ad spend without generating any qualified leads, let alone having them buy into what it is that you're selling or buy into your message because you haven't clarified that message and you haven't identified your target market or you don't have a well-defined sales process. You know, in a single workday, you can have an average sales rep or an average coach, coach or consultant making up to 60 cold calls a day. And in addition to being responsible for following up with dozens of prospects that are in their sales pipeline. So without a proper sales process, trying to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable would actually feel like you're throwing mud at a wall and hoping that it actually sticks. So a well-defined and a repeatable sales process will actually ensure that you or the people that are doing sales within your team or your VAs have a clear roadmap for turning potential leads into customers quickly and efficiently. Now, I've got a question for you. Do you actually have a well-defined and documented sales process within your business? Because if you don't have that, then obviously this uh, podcast 
will be a right fit for you because i know the goal for every coach or consultant uh or small business owner who is who i am hoping is listening to this uh, podcast is to get more clients um and customers and generate more revenue and either grow their business and i assume that is also um you know what you want to achieve for your business and that's probably why you're listening to our podcast every single day i actually advise for you to start subscribing to this podcast because information like this not a lot of people are willing to give it freely okay but how can you actually achieve that goal of getting more clients and generating more revenue what is it that you should do in order for you to scale your online business what you need above all else is an actionable sales process and a digital marketing strategy that actually works and is proven to get you results and you're going to need a good and detailed action plan with the right steps um you know which will take you from point a which is where you are right now to point b which is a business that's profitable and enjoyable so to help you get started in building your own sales process i've collected a lineup of some of the best um resources and what we actually train our um, sales teams and what i actually use and eventually if you're lucky one day to actually experience um you know our sales process um then you also will be able to actually pinpoint what it is that we're doing and how we're taking people um you know from a place of not knowing what it is that they're doing to actually helping them see the results that they are capable of um you know uh receiving or creating all right so maybe you can actually just take advantage of this um you know and 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 sign up to our uh consultation um you know through our website when you click www.livelongdigital.com.au forward slash opb opb which stands for online prosperity blueprint okay so let's dive in um what i also want to leave you with is a few resources and some templates that will actually help you run your sales process efficiently and i'm actually tempted um maybe in a letter post um you know um podcast to actually go with you through our actual sales process mano y mano all right so to start off with what is a sales process all right so a sales process the one that we have created is a five step roadmap that actually turns your potential leads into customers and typically it consists of the following stages the first stage is prospecting which is the initial stage uh, of the sales process and then qualifying this is a stage where you identify whether or not somebody is a potential customer and then you go into the quoting or um uh you know proposal stage which is whether you identify your customer actually has the budget to work with you and then pretty much from there you're closing the deal but we call it um you know um opening or starting the journey with your customer because you don't close them you actually open a journey with them and then pretty much then you define uh in the final stage of the process where you reflect uh whether you got this uh account or not and then you definitely go in and start looking at it all so let's just look at it briefly what i was talking about first of all the prospecting stage so this is the initial stage of your sales process which involves identifying potential clients who would benefit from your product or service and you're reaching out to them so these are the kind of people that you're looking at do they suit your identified target audience from um you know a demographic level or psychographic level and are they the right kind of people with the right kind of pain that you are able to solve whatever problems they might have okay so the prospecting stage is the p- place where you actually uh make sure that the people you're speaking to have the right fit 
are the right kind of person and have the decision making capabilities because there's no point in you wasting a lot of time reaching out to people that cannot even make a purchasing decision within an organization and then when you qualify these people is when you're identifying whether or not this pro potential customer has the means to purchase your product or service all right so when you found that this is the right fit or the right um company you want to work with you want to qualify them uh to see if they are the actual fit for your product or service and do they actually have that a budget because sometimes some people might uh, you know you might have a, a a product or a service but do people have you in their budget or do they actually see the need or the value of having you uh, working with them. So as a consultant, you might be selling your consulting services, your training, your information, or whatever expertise that you have at this qualification stage. Um, this is also used as a platform for you actually pitching your product or service to the key uh, prospect. So this is where you're looking at the actual key benefits, the features, the competitive edge, and everything else that comes along with them working with you. And if they do see you as a viable uh, partner or vendor, you move them on to the proposal or quoting stage. This is where you guys start discussing price and then the terms and conditions of what the next step should look like. And your prospect may actually uh, wish to negotiate conditions before moving on to the next stage. All right. So with the proposal stage, this is where um, you're giving, uh, you're putting the ball in the uh, prospect uh, court so that they can decide whether they can go ahead with you or not. And then you then uh, move your uh, prospect to the closure stage, which is usually the fourth stage of the sales process where you actually close the deal. All right. So you've put what you've dis um, uh, you know, discussed with your prospect in writing and you're setting it off uh, so that your prospect can have the final approval. And this is either done in person or um, you just wait for an email from them, letting them, uh, letting when they're letting you know uh, whether they're working with you or not. Okay. So at this st stage, that's when you would know whether you've lost this contract or you've actually won it. So in the final stage of your sales prospect, this is an actual reflection of uh, both parties uh, on what has worked and what didn't work. And if you didn't, and if you won the deal, obviously you're going to be speaking with your um, support or operations team to make sure that the new customer remains loyal and you actually start the onboarding journey uh, so that your customer doesn't have, um, you know, what they call buyer's remote, uh, remorse where they're not quite sure if they may made the best decision or not. And if you've lost this deal, you want to consider what went wrong. Uh, maybe you prospected the right, the, the 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 wrong person. Maybe you didn't qualify them enough, or maybe it was a price issue. But always remember that somebody's always going to be out there who can do it cheaper, better, faster. So you also want to don't um, attach yourself to the result as much because simply if you've lost that deal it might not have been the right timing for your prospect in which case um you want to be sure to set a date to follow up with them in the future okay and when you execute this five-step process you know don't um you know hold yourself uh to the bottom or actually having to know what to say word for word in each stage you know what i mean um, you know, it's just to help you understand and be comfortable uh, and that even without a script or the exact words to use, you can still be successful if you actually follow the process. Okay. So um, it also differs and it depends on your company and the actual product that you're putting out there. So for example, uh, qualifying a B2B prospect often requires you speaking with multiple decision makers than it requires uh, and it requires a little bit more time and effort than if you were a coach who's actually looking at the final um you know uh sales person in the sales process okay now with that being said the overall purpose of your sales process remains the same regardless of how it is actually 
executed. And for you to help your uh, sales team or yourself in your journey um, into turning these potential leads into customers, at least you have to have it defined in such a way that it's easy to remember and it's easy to follow and also easy to teach and also easy to spot where the breakdown might be if somebody is not actually producing, um, you know, uh, or reaching their sales quarters. So this is why you really need to build a sales process. I think um, in the previous days, I actually put out a, 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 a podcast defining, um, you know, the sales process or the processes that you need within your business. Because if you have these processes, you will uh, definitely put yourself in a position to create a business that's repeatable and is profitable and enjoyable. And when these processes are in place, it really makes it super, super easy, um, you know, for you to uh, identify leaks within your business or identify, um, you know, places where you need to refine and actually, um, uh, go in and, 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 and help your, your teams, uh, perform at their best. So that is maybe one of the reasons why you need to build a sales process. And regardless of how experienced you might be, uh, in your, uh, business or in your, so, you know, niche, a lack of a process puts you at a risk of getting off track. Um, and maybe you move too fast or you move too slow with the prospect and you start missing uh, sales signals or sales opportunities altogether. So when you have a formalized sales process, it actually ensures that either you or your team stays productive and efficient in providing the f specific steps in order for you to follow, uh, you know, the key benchmarks that actually drives um you know your customers uh, your your prospects to actually become uh customers because a customer won't buy until they're ready and how are you going to know that your customer is ready is by you actually making sure that you're following all the steps along the way and that nothing has been missed or nothing has been skipped all right so when you're building a sales process it becomes a roadmap that aligns all key points in your buyer's journey. And with your sales process, your team can actually visualize what it takes to bring a prospect, um, you know, to the one stage. Because if somebody doesn't quite know what the next step is, it becomes super difficult for them to pick up the phone. It becomes super difficult for them to understand um, what the next thing is, because it's, you know, our ego is involved when we are told yes or no each and every single time. And when you don't have a defined process to know whether you've done everything possible, then you might actually start blaming yourself as not being a competent salesperson or a competent uh, consultant. And that will then actually uh, even ruin your day. So if you use you know, the resources that you would have built around the sales process, it becomes a unique value um, that your customer actually has because they can see that you've got a defined way of getting them results. A lot of people uh, start scattering around with a lot of papers, a lot of diagrams and a lot of, um, you know, processes which confuses, first of all, themselves and then the customer. And let me tell you something, a confused person does not make a decision, all right? So you want to identify what needs to happen at each stage with your prospects and then you prod them along the process and eventually it converts them to customers. If you want people to actually uh, do exactly what you want, show them how easy it is for them to get onto the next step. And if you can show somebody, um, you know, their, the next step, it's easy for you to actually justify the failures in the past because the reason why they're coming to you before is because they've either failed to do whatever provision of service by themselves and you're justifying to them that look at this, it's because you did not have a streamlined method for you to get results and it is acceptable and it is don't beat yourself up. That's the reason why you couldn't get results in the past. And you can actually encourage people's dreams because if you've got a streamlined process, it's easy for the customer to actually have clarity 
see as to where they're going to. Remember, when you're driving, um, you know, going to um, any place yourself, you are going to need some sort of a GPS or a map. And if you can show the customer that, yes, we already know uh, what's ahead and we have already dealt with it and there's a way around it, you give them, um, you know, um, that whole um, peace of mind that, hey, these people actually know what it is that they are doing. And if somebody is not quite ready yet um, and they want to take this um, at another stage, if you've got a defined process, you're not going to repeat. Um, you know, if you've asked them questions, you, you're going to start off from where you left off from. All right. And it actually shows the customer that you are organized and, and they're not going to have to be repeating themselves because some people um, might not be happy, uh, you know, discussing why they're failing to achieve certain results or things within uh, their business. And it just really hurts their ego. So, you know, so if you've got a defined process, it just makes it super easy for them to follow along. And you can use tools and processes to actually make this happen, um, you know, automatically behind the scenes without you uh, physically being involved. All right. So if you've created the sales process, you can actually automate some of these, um, you know, activities, which then takes away the angst of being afraid of follow up because you might forget or you might just think, oh, I spoke to this person on Friday and they were not quite ready. I can't call them today. And before you know it, you are now in a position to, um, you know, stop with the follow up and there's money in follow up. So one of the best things that you can use in your follow up process is a CRM. So you want to supercharge your sales process with a valid and uh, functional CRM, which is a customer um management system okay all right so the right organization tools are absolutely essential um you know to the process of this five step sales process just think about it during your prospecting stage let's say you're just getting started you're ideally maybe uh, collecting information from a lot of people because that's the top of your funnel, all right? So maybe you put out a post on your social media or you um, were at a trade show or you were involved in a podcast and then people are just coming through right at the beginning of your sales process. So you're speaking to hundreds of people and then you need to qualify them from then on to see if they're the right kind of person with the right kind of pain. And for you to qualify, you need to identify maybe who the key decision makers are within, um, you know, the, the, the prospects uh, organization. And you also need to research their pain points and whatever their key challenges and whatever their needs. Remember when we started the podcast, we did mention that people are coming to buy just predominantly what it is that they want or what they have to, or they're seeking out pleasure and trying to avoid pain. Now, if you can capture that in your CRM, then you don't have to repeat the process of trying to find out what might be ailing them that might need um, you to solve their problem and makes it super easy for you to use that, um, you know, in your sales process to remind the customer that, hey, remember you had this pain? This is the reason why you need our products or services. So where do you store all of this information and how do you make sure that it's accessible uh, during the next stage of the sales process? And mind you, this might take months or days or weeks or years, all right, from the time that somebody has gotten wind of what it is that you do to the time that they actually then hand you over your credit card. So it's not a linear process that you just wake up today and you know that, 55 people in your uh, sales pipeline are in the prospecting stage and 40 people are in the qualifying stage. This may go uh, back and forth, you know, up until the person is quite ready to make a purchase from you. And you can't sell to somebody who's not yet ready, um, you know, to sell or to, to buy from you. So a CRM would actually help either yourself or your team to collect and then manage and then access this large pool of detailed customer data in all in a one simple to use space. Have you ever rang up your telephone company or have you ever rang up, um, you know, your gas uh, company and they start 
telling you things that you mentioned in the last call. It's not because the rep was paying attention. No, they just wrote notes um, in a big CRM. And with the way information is now available these days, these CRMs, some of them actually connect with your social media so much that um, people can get maybe your latest tweets or your latest posts and they feel like they actually, um, you know, have intricate and, um, you know, information about you. So find out from your CRM if any of those integrations can be made available i mean within reason you can actually start talking about their family or what they did on the weekend just to create rapport and you know people buy from those that they know like and trust and if somebody feels like you already know them it just makes it super easy for them to say hey um you know this person somehow gets me or remembers so they will be the right um you know fit to be my supplier so you can uh, log in and review every conversation that would have um, taken uh, place with the prospect and then just help, you know, you know, all this information stay organized and up to date. And it makes it super easy for, um, you know, to prod your uh, prospects to the next stage, because it's when somebody feels like you already know, um, you know, what their problem is, they are open to whatever solutions you might have uh, to work with them. So all of this just really, really helps you be doing, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And like I said, you know, these five stages of you prospecting, qualifying, courting, uh, and actually closing your customers and then deciding whether you've won or lost is now becoming proprietary information, which you can then use um, if you've won a customer, you go back to the marketplace uh, looking for them, you know, the right kind of person with the right kind of uh, bones that you've closed before. And you can also then, uh, once you've got all that information with your customer, help them on board onto your services and ask for referrals, you know, because if, um, you know, if a customer is the right fit, they might have friends or family that might also be a right fit that they can refer you too. So if you've got a process, um, you know, that works for you, all of this can be uh, automated using the right tools. So if you've got a well-defined sales process, it now becomes the foundation of a successful uh, business because, you know, the more you are converting prospects into customers, the more you actually have people that pay, stay and refer. And that creates recurring revenue. And when you have recurring revenue, you actually become profitable. And it actually serves as a roadmap that you can literally follow to show your customers that you are actually organized and you can help them um, you know, uh, you know, solve whatever problem that they came to you for. And when you can actually identify uh, the kind of prospects that you want, it then informs your marketing department or your, your posts or your uh, sales materials, the kind of people that you want to be dealing with, um, you know, especially if you've got a well-defined sales process. So just make sure you've got all of that uh, going on within your business because if you can't um, express or express explain to people um, why they're the right fit and why you are the right fit for them. It really makes it super difficult for people to actually think, hey, uh, we need this, uh, you know, this uh, person to work with, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So use these resources that are provided uh, and equip yourself or your team uh, with the tools that are actually needed to efficiently and consistently meet your sales quarters so regardless of how experienced you are you know in the world of sales or um you know in your expertise you might be an nlp practitioner and everything else that comes along with it if you lack a process it, it actually just puts you at a disadvantage because our customers are being sold to each and every single day and they if they don't sense or if they don't notice that um you know you're moving them through some sort of um uh you know channel they might not take notice so if somebody else is actively vying for their attention actively following up with the crm and actively has a formalized sales process they can actually start eating your lunch so having a sales process actually ensures that you and your team stays productive and efficient by actually providing specific steps that people can follow 
and key benchmarks for you to uh, hit. And you can actually then retrace your steps like Hansel and Gretel, um, you know, to find your way back home just in case you stop hitting all the roadmaps or all the home runs. Okay. So with an actual roadmap, which outlines all these uh, key buying uh, processes or in the key buying journey, your sales process um, will actually help you and your team visualize what it will take to bring a prospect to actually win as many deals as possible. Like I said, it's actually very tough growing your own business because if you're just cold calling potential clients and you have them hanging up in your face, it's because they don't know who you are or there's no defined process that they would have followed. Or if you're just sending hundreds of emails without even getting as much as a thanks for reaching out, you're wasting a lot of time, money, and effort, and maybe at some point, tarnishing your brand as a spammer. Okay, I don't want you returning to the safety of a nine to five job just because you can't bring in new clients. Let me see how I can actually help you. If you are looking for a systemized process to actually generate leads um, that pay, stay, and refer without you even being involved in, why don't you download one of our uh, blueprints that came along with this podcast so that you can actually have a process that will help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I can't wait to see you succeeding on the other side. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today this community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.